Good morning, my friends. Father Wynn here with my morning coffee in my Peruvian coffee cup. And I'm back at home in the living room on a blustery and rainy morning. So no outside exotic places for morning prayer this morning. Today is Friday, the September 18th. And the church remembers today Edward Bouverie Pusey, who died on this date in 1882. He was a critical person in what was called the Oxford Movement in Anglicanism in the 19th century. The Oxford Movement was a movement of high church members of the Church of England, which eventually developed into Anglo-Catholicism. The movement, whose original devotees were mostly associated with the University of Oxford, argued for a reinstatement of some older Christian traditions of faith and their inclusion into Anglican liturgy and theology. They thought of Anglicanism as one of three branches of the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. By the 1840s, many participants decided that the Anglican Church lacked grace and converted to Rome. Chief among those was John Henry Newman, who eventually became a cardinal. The movement of philosophy was known as Tractarianism after its series of publication, The Tracts for the Times, published from 1833 to 1841. Tractarians were also disparagingly referred to as Newmanites before 1845 and Puseyites after 1845, after the two prominent Tractarians, John Henry Newman and e. Edward Bouvery Pusey. The Reverend Dr. Sam Portero wrote about E.B. Pusey in Brightest and Best, a companion to the Lesser Feasts and Fasts. And he said this about Pusey. He said, Pusey was unswervingly convinced of the truth of his Anglican heritage, believing that Anglicanism did indeed possess the genuine balance of Catholicity and the remedies of the Reformation. A student of the new biblical criticism emerging from Germany, yet thoroughly grounded in the teachings of the early church. Pusey, like the scribe portrayed in Matthew's gospel, who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old, knew that there was merit in both tradition and reform. Pusey is credited with bringing stability to the Oxford movement, and in the end, it was not his erudition, but his example that proved stabilizing. We remember the life and ministry of Edward Pusey, his friendship with Newman, and the spirit of dignity and peace that prevailed in his dealings with those who most differed from him. When the dust clears on our own generation, whatever stability remains, will not be attributed to the arguments we won, but the examples we set. Good suggestions and good recommendations by the Reverend Dr. Sam Portero for us today. Let's begin by taking a moment to breathe. Close your eyes if you're comfortable with doing that. Watch your breath going in and out. Remember, like every day, our in-breath can draw up from within into our awareness all that we carry and all that concerns us. And the out-breath can be a releasing a giving over, a letting go. Of all that we are and all that we bring, in all our struggles and all our complexities, 
a letting go of it all into the breath and spirit of God. And we can both breathe in that spirit and release and let go into that spirit. and find that place of peace within. Which is not a passivity or a quietist peace. It has been described as strife closed in the sod. but it is a peace that's given as a gift. It's the peace of grace. The peace of listening. The peace of love. Let's now turn to page 80 as we begin with the invitatory. <clears throat> Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Continuing on page 82 with the Venite. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. Come, let us adore him. The psalm is Psalm 106, found on page 741. Psalm 106 on page 741, and I will take a sip from my coffee. Psalm 106 on page 741, and we're going to read verses 1 through 5. <clears throat> Hallelujah! Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Who can declare the mighty acts of the Lord, or show forth all his praise? Happy are those who act with justice, and always do what is right. Remember me, O Lord, with the favor you have for your people, and visit me with your saving help, that I may see the prosperity of your elect and be glad with the gladness of your people, that I may glory with your inheritance. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The scripture reading for this morning is Matthew 13, verses 44 to 52. Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which someone found and hid. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. 
Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered, yes. He said to them, therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Turning to page 86, let's say together Canticle 10, the second song of Isaiah. And again, I'll pause while you turn to page 86. nothing like the coziness of one's home when it is raining outside. Seek the Lord while he wills to be found. Call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the evil ones their thoughts. And let them turn to the Lord and he will have compassion and to our God for he will richly pardon For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as rain and snow fall from the heavens, and return not again but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread for eating, so is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish that which I have purposed and prosper in that for which I sent it. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We'll continue on page 97 with the Our Father, followed by Suffrages A. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. Guide us in the ways of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. The Collect of the Day for E.B. Pusey. Grant, O God, that in all time of our testing we may know your presence and obey your will, that following the example of your servant Edward Bouvery Pusey, we may with integrity and courage accomplish what you give us to do and endure what you give us to bear. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. 
Amen. A Collect for Fridays. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain, and entered not into glory before he was crucified, mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A Collect for Mission. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your Spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In our prayer list this morning, we remember especially Father David Dupre. Tomorrow, Saturday at 1 p.m., is the first ballot in the Diocese of Wyoming, where Father Dave is one of three finalists for Bishop of Wyoming. And so our hearts, our prayers, our thoughts are with you, Father Dave. We pray for all those who are deployed, Ryan Irwin, Max Hazel, Andrew Maurice, David Spaulding, and Catherine Schweitzer. For all healthcare workers, especially Ben Reyna and Rob Blackwood, Beth Corliss, Rebecca Dang, Tom Grant, Glenn Jones, Robin Lee, Sarah McLaughlin, Virginia Marshall, Carolyn Moneymaker, Norwood, Michelle Prescott, Jerry Reason, Bill Reed, Amy Riccio, Patricia Strauss, Ted Tanner, John Taylor, Tim Taylor, Ann Voigt, and Sally Ward. We pray for all hospital chaplains, especially Deb O'Neill Lewis, and military chaplains, especially Chandler Irwin, David Dupre, and Nigel Beardsley. And we pray for the repose of the soul of Margie Griffiths. And we pray for those facing illness, surgery, injury, or adversity, especially Catherine Blackwood, Ann Taylor Cahill, Will Chambers, Linda Cherry, Dana Coltrin, Holly Cook, Rick Craig, Sue Cromlin, Terry Davis, Roy Dudley, Mary Earhart, Carrie Hughes, Tom Foyt, Dawn Fink, Lauren Henry, Julia and her family, David Marty, James Malloy, Langhorn Porter, Ruth Provost, Phyllis Sayers, Francis Smith, Mavis Stapleford, Dawn Tinkler, Priscilla Trinder Rohde, and Heidi Trumbull. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus forever. Amen. Hope you all have a beautiful Friday. Be careful of all the rain and stay comfortable. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. And then Sunday we have our Sunday activities.